Hello and assalamu alaikum my lovely doctors. So today, as I promised yesterday, we will do asthma, uh, the treatment of asthma for PLAB1 in children. Yesterday, as I have discussed with you, it was uh, asthma management in adults. Today, we are going to do asthma management in children. Uh, I'm so sorry, guys. I haven't found in my notes, notes um, the treatment, the long-term treatment in children. Uh, so I reckon uh, it must be the same as adults uh, because I haven't written it separately uh, but still uh, do not just go with uh, what I'm saying here uh, just go and check out if you can find the long um, you know long-term management of asthma in children uh, is it any different than um, adults or not uh, and also if you do find please let me know and uh, comment down below uh, so let's start with the acute management uh, well most of it is very very similar to what we did acute management of asthma in adults uh, I think it's just one point that is different so I will not spend a lot of time on this today instead I will tell you uh, what is the most uh, I, I will discuss with you a little bit about the most diagnostic uh, test for asthma and COPD all right so we are going to in acute phase if a child is having acute attack of asthma we are going to give 100% oxygen I hope you guys remember this is true non-breathable bag all right and the next step we are going to do is nebulize with salbutamol right all right guys here i think here what is it different than in adults if you guys can remember we added here with salbutamol ipratropium bromide whereas not in children in children is going to go down below right so after nebulized salbutamol we will do nebulized or high v corticosteroids or hydrocortisone is the same thing right and then we will give magnesium sulfate magnesium sulfate after magnesium sulfate if that doesn't work we will give aminophylin or theophylline right after that if that doesn't work we will give ipratropium bromide right it's not with salbutamol this time as it was in adults it's down here and then the last step if ipratropium bromide has not made the patient any better then we will do call the anesthetist and intubate after general anesthesia right all right you guys now in gmc scenario usually what happens is i think by now you guys must have gone through many questions regarding asthma um, so the question comes like so the patient is having an acute ac attack and was given blah 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 and now what are you going to give then if they say they have given oxygen nebulized salbutamol nebulized or IV hydrocortisone not now what are you going to do or they might just ask until here and then ask what are you going to do to the patient now then you will your answer will be this and if they have given you all these three then your next step will be this if all these three are in question then your next step would be this and so on right now a few more points regarding asthma and COPD so just remember investigation the most diagnostic for asthma any day would be PEFR this is for PLAB1 okay I'm not saying in hospital but for PLAB1 any day the most diagnostic and also terminator if you find a question like that for asthma what will be your answer PEFR right okay and for treatment just remember if ever uh, you are an asthmatic for an asthmatic needs oxygen what oxygen uh, saturation are you going to give for asthma 100 percent 
right? And which mask are you going to use? Non-breathable, non-breathable bag, right? Right, and for COPD, the most, if, if a patient is coming with an acute attack, so for an acute attack, because you know in COPD patients there is an acid-base balance uh, problem, um, then you are going to do to find out those acid-base disturbances, you are going to do ABGs, right? In acute phase, right? And if, it, if they, in a GMC question, if they ask, what is the most diagnostic or definitive? Okay, diagnostic and definitive are, is the same word, right? You are going to do pulmonary function tests, right? And to monitor COPD patient, which test are you going to use? Pulse oximetry, right? And oxygen concentration, whenever you're going to give oxygen to a COPD patient, you are going to give 24% oxygen via venturi mask, via venturi mask, right? All right, now in case you guys don't know, why do we give 100% oxygen to an asthma patient, but not a COPD patient, right? Why? Because COPD patient has blockage in airways, right? They have blockage in airways, and because of that, the carbon dioxide, all of the carbon dioxide that will be produced, will not be able to escape. It will stay in, right? It will stay in and it will disturb the acid-base balance. It will disturb the acid-base balance. So we do not want the patient to have loss of oxygen all of a sudden and then that carbon dioxide will accumulate, accumulate, accumulate. You don't want the patient to die, right? So you will only give 24% oxygen, 24% oxygen, right. Okay, guys, we will discuss COPD in detail in my next video. And regarding this oxygen, when you increase this concentration in a COPD patient, I will discuss that in my next video when I'm discussing COPD, right. And also, guys,